you dive. Wind rushes past your face as the sea of black sand spreads out before you. The translucent bubbles of colony dome cities dot the landscape. You're rejoining the earth your people left behind. You just wish this time wasn't so dire. Your island is sinking. Can you save it? What's going on, YouTube? Earth Power here, joined by CVH. How's it going, everybody? And we are bringing you guys a four-player Dust to Dust match. We, we finally made it. Yeah, the max players you can have for Dust to Dust. So I'm, I'm excited to finally show you guys one of these. Now, I will preference this match saying it is very attack heavy. Um, we, we changed around some of the cards in the Fortify set. And by change around some of the cards, I mean we changed one card. Um, we substituted Wellspring Portal out for Mirror Ball Mimic. And that turned out to be a big mistake. So, Mirror Ball Mimic uh, is very cool. Uh, it copies the last ally you play, but Wellspring Portal is the uh, the efficient card that you draw up to four cards in your hand, right? Yes, it keeps it keeps your hand alive after you've been attacked on a uh, on a four player round uh, game like this. And Shadow Step proves to be a, a pretty powerful card over the course of this match. And we'll uh, we'll get into that shortly as these players begin to set up. But to introduce who's actually playing, um, we've got Gorby on the right. Um, Justin, you know him, you love the, him. Ryan on the left, and Jake at the top. Um, friends that we've grown up playing with, and I, I believe, yes. So Ryan does go first here. And so, he dusts an energy um, and buys a blacksmith. Yes. So blacksmith being the uh, fusion fragment strat uh, card, efficient, discard a fusion fragment out of your hand, gain two energy. So is that Jake, Jake with a four buy? Now, as, as the person who's played in the last couple months, Carl, you're, I'm going to lean on you to tell me like what the cards' names are and what they do. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. So Jake uh, dusts a fusion fragment. And, and again, keep in mind, three players at this table are completely brand new to this game. We played one test game for about 20 minutes prior to recording this, so all of these players are still relatively fresh to this. So if they do a few things out of turn, we'll speak to it. But... Jake dusts a fusion fragment there, has a four by for a mock boot chaser. And if you guys have seen us use that in the past couple of videos, um, mock boot says choose an opponent to discard a card um, and you draw one card and it's efficient and it provides a victory point. And that's obviously so when Gorby you play the ally, not when you buy it. Yeah, I'm interested to in see what Gorby does because he's the one who's played this game a bunch before. So he has four energy and a fusion fragment. I'm assuming he's determining whether he wants to dust the fragment and he does dust the fragment and buys is that. Uh, what is that? Green Keep Merchant. Um, that is the other draw card. It's supposed to be a part of the Fortify set. Um, so Gorby immediately sees just how this board is kind of set to play, and we had kind of spoken to it a little bit just as a roundtable, because I'm standing in the background recording this, and we're just kind of discussing as we go. Um, just in there with a 4 by for Rustburn Furnace. But um, Gorby sees that the only real efficient draw card in this whole table is green keep merchant. So he has a four by for two of those, knowing that once this gets going and the attacks start rolling, he's not really going to have a hand every turn. So green keep is a way to discard cards from your hand. You can discard up to three cards and then draw that many cards. So Jay, so, uh, so Ryan buying another merchant there with three energy. Did he, I don't know if he dusted another energy, but yeah, he's, he's keeping all the fusion fragments he, in his deck and trying to draw them with the, I believe he did. I believe he did. He did. Okay. So Ryan's Ryan's leaning very into the uh, fusion fragment. Yeah. Strat. So his his deck right now is two blacksmith, two fragments, and six energy. So odds are pretty high he can draw one of the blacksmiths with one of the fragments and have a pretty good next turn. Yeah. That's the hope, at least for him. All right, let's see what Jake does. Every time Jake leans forward, by the way, the nameplate I gave him is right on his forehead. So no. <laughs> it's, it's directly oh. labeling. So Jake also buys a uh, fuse. Oh. Uh, Use Forge Mage and and dust and energy to get there. That's what's so. interesting with the four player game. Sometimes you can see some of the narrower strategies available become contested. 
Yes. And Gor Gorby's like happy to dust his fragments. He's like, I'm not gonna, you know, there's two people already taken blacksmith. That means I've got to do something else. Yeah. And he grabs a rust burn furnace there. Rust burn furnace allows you to dust up to two cards in your hand and gain two energy for each card that you dust. Justin quickly taking a, did he take two of the gatekeeps? He's copying Gorby. Uh, Justin's playing really quick, so I want to see if this pays off. He, he's like thinking about his next buy on everyone else's turn. Ooh, Jake looks like he drew kind of, or Jake, Ryan looks like he drew exactly what he wanted. Uh, blacksmith right. and a fragment. And he has another yeah. blacksmith. He can play it for an energy because it's efficient, even if he only has the one fragment in his hand. Exactly. So that's four energy on the board currently. And he and has yeah, two more. So that's a six buy if he wants it. Yep. I believe Let's he does. He so this is the point that we realize that this card's about to become a problem. Shadow now, Step. What, what, is, what does this card do for those of us who can't read it? Uh, Shadow step, and I should probably go grab the box so I can actually read this accurately. But grab the box, I can pause it. Yeah, shadow. Well, it's it's fine. Yeah, shadow step right. says that every player on the board, and Jake also has the same play with his blacksmith now. Um, also grabs a shadow step. So shadow step says every player on the board discards a card, and then you can. I believe you can grab one card from dust. So if you want to fill some dead air for me real quick, I'm gonna go grab the cards up. Yeah, so uh, two blacksmith strategies starting off the game, and uh, they both kind of got lucky. Like, the odds are kind of high, but the fact that they both were able to get six buys this early means there's a lot of power about to be in play very quickly. Uh, it's not something you normally see, and these are both attack-heavy six drops, so I, I can see what Carl's saying, where um, this game's about to have a lot of people discarding a lot of cards. Um, and again, to speak to the, the pool building, how important that is in this game, the fact that they removed Wellspring Portal, which was the best draw card in the pool, uh, draws you the most amount of cards for the least amount of cost. Uh, it could mean players wind up with some, some strangled hands later in the game. But it yeah. looks like people are sort of solidifying their strategies early, see how things develop. Well, and, you know, Spencer and I spoke to it, and you can you can kind of hear it in the interview a little bit, and I think we spoke to it a lot, too, when we were just recording the, uh, just the card reviews, is that, you know, we mentioned that the other win condition for this game isn't necessarily getting the relics. It's getting, you know, dumping, uh, not dumping, removing dumping. three. <laughs> not everything is dumping, Carl. Everything is, is about dumping. We do like dumping, though, but uh, the other win strat is to just get rid of three piles on the board. And so Jake just took a... Up, sorry. Yeah. Jake just took a no, Chancellor, I'm... right? Is Chancellor the card? Yes. So Chancellor is the other decent draw card in this set as well, but it's not efficient. So... Yeah. But it um, can draw you two cards, if I remember correctly? Yes. It can either just choose an opponent to discard a card and you draw one card, or just draw two cards. Yeah, so I really so like that I, take from Jake. You know, he knows that people are going to be discarding stuff and he wants to regain some hand. Like, he could have taken a greedy mimic or a mirror ball mimic or something, but I like getting... Uh, Chance is one of my favorite cards. I think it's just pretty good, no matter what you're going for. Yeah, so Shadow Step Spymaster says all opponents discard one card or you choose an opponent to discard two cards. Yeah. And then choose one card from each opponent's discard and dust them. Yeah, that's really strong. And then a four-player game is super interesting, too, because you discard more cards if you let it hit everyone at the table, but sometimes if someone gets really far ahead, you just target them really hard and make them discard multiple cards. So a really yeah. flexible attack card there. What's Gorby yeah, working green. with? So, yeah, Gorby Greenkeep Merchant discarded a few cards, goes into Chancellor, and then has another uh, Greenkeep Merchant. So awesome. um, a few things to note here. Shadow Step Spymaster does provide a victory point. So not only is it a very powerful attacking card, it provides that victory point. And then Green Keep Merchant, I'm looking at for it right now, but I'm almost positive. Yes. It does, right? Yeah. Green Keep Merchant provides an energy. So oh, energy, energy. As, as does Chancellor. So yeah. a lot of also, the cards on this provide energy. I just want to highlight that I really enjoy and recommend the way Gorby lays out his cards while he's playing his turn, because these turns, especially later in the game, can get kind of complicated. And like organizing the cre the allies, whatever you want to call them, that you are playing throughout your turn and then counting the energies up 
uh, it can help you because the math of, you know, to figure out how many energy you have and how much you can buy is uh, sometimes not as easy as it sounds. Arithmetic is hard. Uh, well, just saying. And I mean, that just it speaks to board game night in general. You know, it pays to be organized when you've got a group of players at the table who all want to just kind of be involved and know what's going on, especially when you've got a very interactive game like this. Yeah, organizing really helps your turn. The, really helps the commentators, too. Yes, yes. And Especially when happened. the video is inexplicably not in HD. <laughs> but that's we, we can tell what the cards do, so that's nice. Yeah. So Justin here having a very similar turn to Gorbe, um, with a couple of Green Keep Merchants and a Mock Boot Chaser. I'm not sure who he's targeting here. Targeting Jake. And then Russ Burn Furnace. Uh, he dusts. Is is Green Keep cards. Merchant a shield? It's not right. Uh, Green Keep Merchant is not shield. Okay, because I, I was going to say, like, people should probably be playing the shield if they had one. Do we have any shields in the pool? No, there are no shields in this pool, and that's and that's another one of the realizations that we made a few turns into this, is that oh, you know, with all these shadow steps running around, you know, Wellspring Portal was just kind of the answer to not having a shield, since the majority of the cards on this board are only making you discard cards and not really affecting your death. Mm -hmm. So... You know, having Wellspring was was a major overlook here when we were putting this set together and trying to be fun with it. So, yeah, and there um, are some cards that can like get you back. Like the Chancellor is good and the Hawk is good. But the thing about um, the Spymaster, I believe that's the name of it, is it also lets you choose and discard, uh, choose and dust a card from your opponent's you know discard pile. So <laughs> you spend six on a card that can get you back in the game, and it gets dusted, and you're like, oh, I need to find another six energy, and that's not always easy. And what Thistle is... Down Hawk Two was was probably going to be the answer here. I don't, if I was Justin, that's probably would have been my six buy. Mm -hmm. Instead, Justin went for another Rust Burn and a Green Keep. Um, yeah, to just flush out his deck a little bit more. But I probably would have gone for Thistle Down Hawk just because not only does Thistle Down provide two energy, but if you're really in an energy race, you can just grab two energy out of the dust. Yeah, that's a lesson too. Like sometimes you feel compelled to buy two things because you're like, oh, this is efficient to do with my energy. But sometimes you just want one really good thing, you know, like the, the power of these fives and sixes in this game, it really can't be understated. You're really not going to win a game without having some fives and sixes in your deck, I don't think. Yeah, it's, especially when their their effects are as just powerful. I mean, because at the end of the day, you know, a Rust Burn Furnace can basically it can do what Thistle Down can do. And he's already got two green keeps in his deck. So, you know, it's just it, it, it's it's just drafting logic, right? You know, take the best card in the pool when you have the opportunity to. Mm -hmm. Generally so. speaking, yeah, because other people are going to. Yeah, because if you don't, they will. What so, is the card they, next to... Oh, sorry. Once you get done explaining that, what's the card between Chancellor and Mimic? I can't remember what it does, but no one's taking Chancellor. it. Is a uh, fuse port uh, gate. Fuse port gate. It makes the next card you play. It says draw two cards. The next ally you play is efficient. Oh, that's cool. I I take that. Come on, people. Let's take some fuse ports. Don't believe it is. I don't believe that card is efficient though. I see draw two cards and make my spy master efficient. I'm I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah. Do it. Someone do it. Cowards. Absolute cowards. Um, Is that your hand over there? So Jake here had a pretty good turn. Um, had few. It's his whole fucking head. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, Fuse Forge made into Shadow Step. Fuse Forge made had the fragment, and he had a uh, two energy in the hand. And Spy Master also provides two energy. So I believe Jake here was one off of mm, getting yeah. a relic. Yeah which was kind of bummy, but... Um, yeah, it would be nice to see a relic in place. So so I guess maybe worth noting that, I, I don't know, in my experience at least, usually by about this point in the game, someone's bought a relic in a four-player yes. game. Ideally, and, uh, and you know, it was part of the realization, just kind of uh, playing with new players and, and go back to the interview if you guys haven't watched it yet. It was uploaded right prior to this video, but... Um, Spencer and I talk about just the new players, like new players at the table are always more tempted to buy cards for their deck than they are relics. But it can't be, and you, you said the word understated, can't be understated enough that relics are just very, very powerful cards that can just fuel a strategy. So 
you know, don't be opposed to getting them. And and we may see some rule changes with them in the future. We we go go watch the interview. <laughs> so it's a good video. Uh, Gorby's grabbing that hawk. He knows what the power cards are, and he's in a good position now. He he's like probably realized that he was gonna draw the last five cards in his deck, which means he gets to shuffle, or he was gonna draw, and he needs to shuffle his discard to draw up to five. Wow. Um, so that hawk is a really safe buy. Like if he wasn't gonna shuffle just now, then it'd be a problem. Oh, he actually gets yeah. to play hawk too. I don't even know what's happening, but yeah, it's a lot. So Jake, <laughs> Jake's uh, shadow oh, he... step mage allowed yeah. him to remove some cards from Gorby's graveyard or discard mm. pile, because the other two players only had to discard a card, and that card was what was going to the discard. So Gorby's having a great little turnover there, right? He's drawing cards. Yeah. He's retrieving stuff from dust. How yep. much energy is so, this? Yep, so Thistle down, grabbed back his Chancellor. He played into his Chancellor to draw cards, got a few energy. I believe. Yeah, Just I guess he only grabbed, uh, grabbed yeah, he winds a up black. Dusting energy. He was like, um, I think he was a one or two energy away from a relic too. Yeah, four energy, yeah, because or five energy maybe. Sure, because I the thought Chancellor. Chancellor provided. It it should. I don't know. You have the cards. <laughs> I don't have a set it, yet. It does, it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Poison hand Chancellor does provide an energy. Okay. But I guess we had one energy there, maybe two. But. Yeah, I think Gorby's valuing the uh, the blacksmith copy over like you know just because something costs four doesn't mean it's necessarily better for your deck than one of the three costs. So sometimes you wind up blowing an energy, and that's not always the worst thing ever. I think I think one of the neat things about this pool here too is that the majority of these cards provide victory points: Shadow Step, Rust Burn, Mock Boot Chaser, and uh, yeah. So it's those three. So you know, three all out, of those three out of ten is not a majority. I said a lot. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe I did the majority. I don't know. But either way, three cards in the pool provide um, victory points, which makes them, and that might be Gorby's play here, is just noticing just the way this, this game's progressing, trying to get uh, as many victory points stacked in his deck as possible since it's getting harder and harder to get closer to that 8 by, just based mm -hmm. on the way the pool's gone. Justin, yeah, it's, it's a really uh, interesting uh, pool. Yeah, Ryan there playing Shadow Step, targeted uh, Gorby's Thistle Down Hawk, and then the other two players just discarded energy from their hand, and then that card got dusted. So Nice. Yeah, and that's how that card usually goes if you're not hyper-targeting. Like, if everyone has a full hand already, then, yeah, people are probably going to discard and dust and energy if they don't have anything else in the discard. It can happen. So Ryan here with a 4 by, and I think what he's contemplating, if I remember right, is the... Fragment over the Rust Burn, since they both provide victory points, and he knows just kind of the way the game's going. Um, and I, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Justin's already announced he's just going to try to end this game. So, <laughs> We've already reached that, that point. Uh, let me check the timestamp. We're 17 minutes in, and he's like, I'm done. I need to end this. <laughs> but yeah, you said uh, two piles are already gone Yeah, of the, uh, of the allies, so... Yeah, it's great. I've I don't think I've played so for what it's worth. I haven't played on your channel at all, but so the people know, I've played a lot of dust to dust in early testing with Spencer and like other people too on tabletop. I've never seen a game where two whole ally piles are gone and no one's bought a relic yet. This is a brand new thing that I'm witnessing. Well, the the closest anyone's gotten is is six, and then Jake with the seven by um you know yeah, it's two a, turns. Again. Interesting. If Jake had been able, if he was one energy up. Like some of those yeah. relics can really snowball. I can't I can't see which ones are on the table right now. But like usually when you buy one relic, like you start having some really good turns after that. Because that's a static effect yeah. that no one else can interact with. Yeah. And I believe we've got the world tree and the overclock, if I'm not mistaken. I can't tell if that's overhelm or, or the world tree, but you know, it's one of them. But imagine, overclock. Uh, imagine the one right now that blocks the first attack every round. That would be so good in this pool. Uh, but I mean, even Overclock's really good right now too. Is mm -hmm. it gains that second ally action every turn, and then, yeah. like I said, I I think we're looking at, let's say, I don't think it's Overhelm. Might be Overhelm. I'm not sure. I don't know what that card is. Spencer and Bonnie John made the art like too thematically oh, like good. Oh. It's... oh my oh. god, that is Satellite. So we're looking at oh. Satellite and Overclock. Which one, Satellite? <laughs> satellites the one on the uh the the left yeah, but what does it do 
satellite blocks the first uh, attack. Every That's time. the one. Yeah, yeah. come on. Oh, Jake is probably so mad. He was like, I'm one away. <laughs> I can't believe it. I don't know. Like, if, he, if it wasn't new, he'd be more upset about that. It always sucks to be one away from a relic. Yeah, Just makes you want so it that much Gorby. more. Gorby here. Um, drawing with green keep. Mm -hmm. He's thanking. He's got that uh, Chancellor in his hand we can see. Chop up his discard in, I believe. I want to know what he's deciding on. Like, he has a Chancellor. It seems like it's a pretty good thing to do, but there must be some other powerful thing. Uh, Rustburn. Oh, Rustburn. Okay, I, I thought it was a Chancellor, yeah. Never mind. So, yeah, he's trying to... Yeah, Rustburn in this pool is almost like a trap, right? Like, yeah. you, you normally dust your energy and get two energy for it, and then it's like a powerful turn, but, like, everyone's getting just slammed here. <laughs> So I get like why you wanted Rustburn because we've had some really good test games with it, but like God is like it's so hard to have a good turn right now with all these attacks. Yeah. Justin there plays a green keep, not using the effect. Mock boot chaser causing Ryan to discard a card. And then Rustburn. The pizza Rust remains untouched. Yeah. And I believe he's considering ending the game, but instead goes for a Firefly. And when you say end the game, it's important to note, just like buying the third relic, when the third ally pile disappears, the game isn't immediately over. Everyone else at the table gets to take one more turn to try right. to match or, or surpass whoever has the most victory points. So now that's, a, that's one of the best changes Spencer ever made. Yeah. And now Justin's realizing that he doesn't get to take a final turn. <laughs> he, oh, yeah, yeah. Since he, that was his final turn. <laughs> Right, since the player ends their ends their turn with the last pile missing, all the remaining players get to take a final turn. Yeah. So now we're in it. So Ryan there uh, draws Firefly. Firefly. Let me make sure I don't misspeak on what this card does. Recall a card from your discard pile, then you may discard a fusion fragment, and if you do, draw a card. So has uh, your calls from pile discard pile. Here. Wait, wait, wait. I'm gonna rewind yeah. slightly. Yeah, go back just a second. I want to see what he what he grabbed, if anything. I don't know that he had a discard pile when he played it. It looks like he got a oh he bought a fragment. Sorry. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So yeah. he's just trying to buy for the fragment and just to see if he can win the race. Because yeah. a lot of these players, I know Jake has a lot of fragments in his deck right now, and I think that's what everybody's playing against right now. Yeah, it's unreal so. that zero relics are in play. Literally have never seen it. I'm sure Spencer's seen it because he's done all the play tests, but I've never seen it. <laughs> yeah. So I have so. no idea who's ahead, which is pretty crazy. We're about to find out pretty so, soon. So add Chancellor into a four energy buy with a mock boot. Um Did he get a fragment too? Yeah. So now Gorby with Chancellor, and I believe Gorby's trying to get to eight just to see if he can do it, just to actually buy a relic for the game. Yeah, I mean, and so, that would also be four victory points. You know, it's not, it's a good thing to do. Chancellor into Green Keep um, draws one of his last cards, and now I believe he needs to draw two more. Yeah, so he's already used his ally action because Chancellor is not efficient. Right. So we'll see what he can come up with. Green Key or a Fuse Forge Mage into. He doesn't have the fragment. One, seven, two, or, three, four, five, three. six, seven energy. It looks like seven, right? Yeah, that's, he's got set. He's got four on the board currently. Firefly. Firefly is efficient. All an energy. Oh yeah, yeah, I was miscounting. Yeah. And then I believe that should be eight if the three cards in his hand are energy now, which I believe was the rest of his deck. So, Let's see if he, he does it. One in his deck, right? He's. He's slow rolling it. Yeah, what's going on? I'm not sure. I think we're just things. Yeah, yeah, sorry for the... Okay, so there it is. That's, uh, that's the eight or nine, right? So he could do it if he wants. Maybe it's yeah, nine? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, he did it. No, oh, he did it! <laughs> we, we've, re we've reached relic status. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It only took 23 one, minutes. One, 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 yeah. Fuse Forge, Firefly provides one, and then he had the three energy for the eight by. So now this is so the most fun part of the game where you count them up. Yep. So Jake over there with a handful of fragments. 
looks like nine total victory points between the two mock boots, the shadow step and the three fragments. Ryan with a total of six, two fragments, rust burn, shadow step. Yeah, Gorby literally just has rust burn furnace and his satellite. And then <laughs> Justin, the guy who ended the game has two rust burn furnaces and a mock boot chaser. So, so he ended the game while only having three victory points. Yeah. So yeah, he ended yeah, the game yeah. in dead last. So he has three. Gorby has four plus one, which is five. Uh, Ryan has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? Ryan and... has six. Oh, it's, uh, Spy, uh, Spy Master is only worth one. Okay. Only and then uh, Jake over there with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? You said nine? Yep. So he wins. Yep. Yeah, no, he, he he won that game. Yeah, just the sleeper cell over there in the back. And and I can speak to it, too. Not that you all want to listen to the audio for this, because it's it's a nightmare. But um, <laughs> it's, it is kind of weird. He doesn't really say a word throughout this whole game. Like, he's just trying to play and understand what he's doing. And it's all turn by turn stuff. But I think I think he realized that, you know, after the shadow step by, it was just, OK, I, I just need to grab as many victory points as I can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and he, he held on to him really well and it was uh so it went yeah. jake ryan gorby and then justin if my math is right that's really yeah. interesting uh so i really yeah. it's like in a vacuum i liked i i you know i really liked gorby's strat of, of like dusting the fragments because he saw other people going for blacksmith strats but then like because everyone was getting so attacked and slammed like the good stuff draw cards and buy other stuff strategy that gorby was going for like if, if you're if you're getting rid of fragments, you need to be able to buy some relics, and like no one was able to buy relics. And and Gorby did get hit pretty hard towards the middle of that match when Shadow Step made him uh, dust the Thistle Down Hawk in his in his discard pile. Because mm -hmm. I think part of that strat was because if you looked at his deck in that final turn, he went through the majority of it. Fireflies and Fuse Forge Mage both play into the Fusion Fragment strategy of being able to discard them from your hand so you can get some utility out of them. Uh, Fireflies letting you draw a card when you discard a Fusion Fragment, and Blast Forge Mage giving you the uh, extra energy. So, you know, Gorby's idea was seeing all of those Fusion Fragments get dusted, because there's a handful in the dust pile right now. Like, had any of these players been able to get to six and start picking up uh, Thistle Down Hawks, you know, that would have that would have added a, a pretty deep layer to the game. And Gorby having his uh, shot out of his graveyard, you know, almost at the turn after he played it was, was super yeah. unfortunate. Yeah, that is, uh, if you only have one Hawk and it gets sniped, it costs a lot to buy more of them, for sure. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was really interesting. I mean, usually sometimes you see people with fragments in first place, but usually it's supported by relics. So like overall, it was a very low victory point finish because yeah. it was due to the allies and not the uh, the three someone having three relics. Like if someone has three relics, that person ends with 12. Right. So like yes. by default, yeah. that person would have just with the relics beaten everyone at the table. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. very low victory point game, which is uh, yeah. really interesting. I've never seen anything quite like it, to be honest. So thank you for yeah. letting me be a part of it and witness a uh, wacky game of dust to dust. For sure. So, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed your first uh, four player game. Um, we'll have another one of these coming at you here in the next day or so. Um, I'm going to try to get Gorby, maybe CVH back well, to a uh, common. No. Oh, yeah. I <laughs> no. thought you meant like play with you. And I was like, well, you got to do oh, it on yeah. tabletop. Oh, sim. Yeah, please. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to get you down here to actually do it. And just see if you got to come visit. Or we got to come visit. Tabletop yeah, CME. We'll, we'll figure it out. But yeah, um, I'm trying to get uh, Gorby in to commentate. We had another um, pretty long one that actually ended with the uh, with the relics. So um, I'm interested to bring that one to you guys because that was that was a much more fleshed out game that was felt a lot more fun to play. <laughs> and yeah. I guess is the better way to put it. Watching this game and you know hearing their reactions as they played it was not not that it was unfun and i guess that's what's the important takeaway here is that the game was just played differently you know it was it was very attack heavy it was hard to keep a hand and it was hard to keep a strategy alive because shadow step was literally just ruining everything because there were literally three cycling around the board so yeah, and i don't you know, think it, anyone did anything egregiously terrible i just think the pool was what it was you know this is probably the kind of game you're going to get with a pool like this 
Right. So um, very interested to bring you guys the next match, um, which is a little bit longer and plays into the uh, the relics a lot more. So you guys can see how they start interacting with the players hands and uh, amongst each other. So, uh, yeah, until next time, we'll uh, see you guys next. See you guys next time. God, struggled over that. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Until then.